the most monetizable thing in the world is attention. And so the longer they can get you to spend time on your screen in the app, the more money they can make off of ads, which makes a lot of sense. The problem is that there's a lot of power behind these platforms and it becomes very, very addicting. We figured out how to really kind of uh, circumnavigate the dopamine cycle in the brain to make it feel that every time you get a like, every time you get a notification, every time you get a comment, it almost feels like it's more important than real life interactions, partly because it's so readily available. Recommendation algorithms also have improved tremendously, especially with the rise of deep learning, which is a subcategory of artificial intelligence that can break down smaller factors into account and then recommend to you material more accurately, you get better recommendations now on Netflix, on TikTok, on YouTube, on every single platform. It's very hard to escape this juicy, interesting content that appears on the internet. Is social media inherently bad? What are the pros and cons? The value that I get from Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I can't even quantify it. I've met most of my best friends online at this point. And, and so much of the best things that happened in my life have come to me through social media. But I also play defense very aggressively. Shoot There's a point in time where I spent a lot of time on social media. It was actually great because I made a lot of friends as a result of it. And it made a lot of my relationships closer. But at a certain point, it tipped over the edge. And I started being not a producer of content, but a consumer of content. And I made a very easy decision. I'm going to be only a producer of content, not a consumer of content. So the first thing that I did is I made a little Chrome extension to let me block the main feed of Facebook, the suggestions bar on uh, YouTube, the homepage of YouTube, the homepage of LinkedIn, all the suggestions of LinkedIn and limited Instagram to where I could only message on Instagram. With time, the platforms cleaned out the, the vulnerabilities I use in order to build these blockers. But it taught me a couple of concepts around how to be a producer and not a consumer of content. So what can you do now? The first thing and most valuable thing that you can do is activate the child safety lock on your phone. Add a pin that you don't know, but your siblings know, your best friends know, etc. And limit every single social media app on your phone. So I don't have Snapchat on my phone. And for the longest time, I didn't have Instagram. Now I need it for Speedify. But I would only access Instagram via the website. And specifically, I bookmark uh, Instagram.com slash messages. So it would send me directly to only the messaging portion of Instagram. Now I give myself about two to five minutes a day of Instagram. Same thing is true for most other social media. And if I run out of time, I run out of time. And only way for me to access that social media is to have somebody else, whether it be Jack or Lori, Lori or Tyler, put in the code. And if they put in the code, then I can access my social media accounts. Otherwise, I can't. And the more you pull away from social media, the more your mind becomes clear and the more free you are and the less shackled you are to them. There was a point where it was like an automatic thing for me to do this, pull my phone out and look at my notifications. No app is allowed to give me notifications on my phone anymore. And little by little, the addiction and the desire to do this has, has stopped. Usually the reason people go on social media is because they have a five minute break during the day and they want to fill it with something interesting. They open social media and they're going to watch, you know, something on YouTube, something, whatever. But I deleted YouTube from my phone and I don't have access to it on Safari because Safari also, I only have two minutes a day in the mobile browser. Instead, what I do is I open my notes file and I write my goals. Or I'll write a song, or I'll write a poem, or I'll send a message of gratitude to Jan or Jack or Simon or Chai Tu or somebody else on, on, on my team or a member of my family. Or I'll call my mom or my brother. But usually one of the things that I do the most is I send messages of gratitude to people in my life who I really care for. I would say that I send five to eight messages like this per day. It's just become a habit. That's my habit instead of social media is like send a direct message to people about the fact that you appreciate them. Habits make up a person. They are the things that you default to when there is no clear plan. For me, I end up being very intentional about my habits because I'm intentional about the person that I want to be. And so I don't let uh, someone else decide for me how I'm going to run my life. I run my life the way that I want to run my life. And so the first thing with my habits is I have my values. So being productive is a virtue. Being unproductive is an anti-virtue. Spending time on love is a virtue. And spending time on learning is a virtue. So you can see very easily how my habits reflect my values. So first of all, identify what your values are. Secondly, uh, design the systems around you to facilitate good habits. So uh, in my house, I don't have junk food. I only have high protein foods. Um, on my phone, I don't have junk apps. I only have high quality apps, any apps that will suck away my time, I delete or make sure that I'm limited to, you know, only two minutes a day of TikTok. Typically, I do not rely on my willpower to facilitate a habit. I rely on a system that I have designed because I have ADD. I'm not really good at willpower. In summary, how do you cure social media addiction? Number one, delete not good apps from your phone. Activate the child safety lock on your phone and set a pin that you don't know, but your friends know. This is the most important one. Number three, replace the addiction with something positive. I recommend starting using the notes app in your phone a lot to write poetry, write songs, write notes of gratitude to other people. And I message other people about why they've positively impacted your life, whether it be your family, your friends, people who you just met. It's a lot more gratifying than getting likes on Instagram. Another amazing thing to introduce as an alternative to spending seven hours on the screen per day 
is to use Speechify. The nice thing about Speechify is you can go on a walk, you can go on a bike ride, you can go work out, and you can listen to a book, you can listen to a website. It really does positively impact your life. So do that, download Speechify on the app store. You can download the Android app, the iPhone app, the Chrome extension. Now there's also an API that you can use. Tech CEOs can build products that are designed to get you addicted. And they can also build using technology things that liberate you and give you access to more information in the world. If you find this helpful, please share it with a friend or someone that you think would benefit from this video. Uh, click the like button, click the subscribe button, leave a comment, watch some of the other videos on the channel. Um, and most importantly, download Speechify. It changed my life. I think it can change yours too. Happy listening.